All right, so nice to see everybody. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Joni. I'm one of the regional nutritionists with the Giant Company. And today we are gonna talk about just quick, easy meals, things that you can do at home since we're a little bit more stressed now, feed your family in a way that you can do something quickly. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. All right, so what I'm going to do today, we're not actually going to make anything. We're going to talk about quick, easy, affordable meals as a concept, and hopefully you'll leave with some ideas of things that you can do and take back to your households. All right, so what am I calling quick, easy, and affordable? So to get in that group, I'm saying there's a limited ingredient list, so you're not gonna have 20 things, you know, let's get five or less easily assembled. It could be just easier cleanup. That's what makes it quick and easy. Family favorite enhanced, there you get lots of vegetables and healthier items in there. Ways to stretch your food dollar, be more affordable, and also include good nutrition. So those are kind of my factors that we're gonna talk about today. So first, it all starts with a plan, right? So I usually have people take inventory of what's in your refrigerator or pantry that you need to use because you don't want those, you know, fruits or vegetables or even meat getting in the back of your refrigerator and getting old and then having to waste them. That, that's not helpful. So whatever you have to use, it's good just to make a plan before you go to the store and plan for that quick meal. Check your weekly circular. Sometimes things are on sale or you get them for free in the stores, which happens quite a bit, that you can include in your quick meal time. And you may wanna get your family involved. You know, kids sometimes they'll have a say like, hey, would you rather have option A or B for dinner tomorrow night? And then you can make a plan for it. I always tell people to check for savings. So you can start with the store flyer and see if there's anything in there that you can incorporate into your meal. If there's any electronic coupons, you can add them right to your bonus card through the app or online so you don't have to carry paper. But if you do carry paper coupons, which a lot of people do, nothing's wrong with that. We also double manufacture coupons so you save money that way too. So a 50 cent coupon, you could get a dollar off that item and it, it adds up. Even store brands, when you're purchasing, look for the store brands because sometimes equal quality and you could save a good deal of money that way. So when you're shopping, I like to say follow the 80-20 rule. So what is the 80-20 rule? That's basically that 80% of the foods that you put in your shopping cart are foods that are nourishing to you or healthier and let up to 20% be foods that are more mouth pleasure or just those quick fixes like your frozen pizza or something that you, you need in um, a quick time. So if 80% of everything you're buying is good for you, you're, you're doing great, right? That's what it should be. So if you think about it in food items, for every 10 food items that you put in your cart, eight of them should be better for you foods. So how do I know what's a better for me food? So basically any fruit or vegetable falls into that better for you food. And then throughout the store to help you identify, we have Guiding Stars, which is our nutritional navigation system. So in a category, if I'm looking to see, just pretend I'm in the cereal aisle, if I'm looking to find a cereal that's better for me, I don't have to pick up every box and turn over the label and look. I can just look at the price tags. And when I look at the price tags, so if you see on the bottom right here, those price tags, you'll see the Guiding Star man next to the price. We actually don't have the man next to the price, but we do have the stars. So you'll see just yellow stars. There's either one star is a good item, two stars is a better item, or three stars is the best item. So if I'm scanning the cereal aisle and I just look for the stars, like I saw a mom bring her, her daughter there and she just went, you can pick out any cereal you want, it just has to have a star, one, two, or three. And like she went through and that eliminated the ones that are high sugar and brightly colored, you know, multicolored, like they're never going to get a star. 
So it just helps, it helps narrow down the selection to find things that are better for you. And a food that gets a guiding star has more vitamins, minerals, fiber, um, omega-3 fatty acids, whole grains, and it has less saturated fat, trans fat, added sugar, added sodium, or artificial color. So that's kind of how we determine based on those guidelines what's better for you. And this, I'm sure most of you, if you've been to any nutrition lecture, you've seen the plate. Um, so my plate is kind of the food groups just put in there in a way to balance your meals. And I, I usually tell people every snack should have at least two of the food groups, one of them being protein, and then pick any other one, a protein and something. And then for a meal, it should have at least three. So your protein, your vegetable, your grain, if you get a fruit and a dairy in there, great. Um, so that's, that's kind of the way I look at it. Pick three, any three, because the more food groups you include, the more you know you're getting a balanced nutrition or balanced diet to help your body get all the vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, fiber that you need in a day to stay healthy. So this is just one slide I like to say, change the way you think about meat, right? Most Americans put meat in the center of their plate and decide even if they get a vegetable on the plate or you know what goes around it. If you use meat as a condiment, as I'll call it, or an extender, meaning the majority of the meal is your vegetables, right? That's a huge, just thinking about your meat differently is a huge cost savings. So you can still enjoy your meat, but like the bottom picture is a fajita. So it's mostly vegetables, you got some meat, you can wrap it up in a tortilla shell and there's your you know, food groups. Above that would be beef stew. So it's still utilizing meat, but again, it's mostly vegetables. You can put your beef stew over rice or with a biscuit or whoever you choose to eat it. On the left side is a soup. There's still meat in there, but it's mostly your vegetables. Um, and you can have a side salad with that or a piece of bread with that or an apple with that. Below it is a stir fry. So it's lots of vegetables and some of your meat, you can add rice to that. So again, just thinking about meat and how can I incorporate the meat I have with a bunch of vegetables is really not only a money saver, um, but it increases nutrition and decreases the saturated fat you get from meat. So there's a health benefit to having your meat because once you to have the protein, but to including it in ways where you get more vegetables. So now we're gonna get into more specific meal ideas, like what can I do for dinner today? So one meal idea is a skillet meal. So to me, if I'm putting it in one place, like a skillet, that is easy. So skillet meal is really your protein and your vegetable just thrown in the skillet. So this is a picture of salmon and asparagus. I'm cooking them together in one meal. They're coated with olive oil or whatever your seasoning is of choice. It could be a chicken breast and green beans or chicken sausage slices and spinach. Chicken fajita with the pepper and onion that you saw in the skillet on the previous slide. So again, I would pair this with something, right? Maybe a third food group, but this is gonna be the main portion of my meal, one skillet. And I, I tend to like things, you know, a little separated sometimes like in that picture. And then I might have a potato with that salmon and asparagus, or if it was chicken breast and green beans, maybe I'd have a little pasta on the side, or chicken sausage slices and spinach, I can mix pasta in that, or steak fajita, wrap it up in a grain tortilla. So there are ways to add more food groups to it, have fruit for dessert, and it all works out great. So taking the same pasta skillet idea, but not making them separate food groups. To throw them all in one here is what this concept is trying to show you. You can put a whole meal in a skillet. So some ideas, you know, typical Italian, ground meat, sliced great tomatoes, you can throw some pasta in there, cheese, and basil, and that's a meal. Chicken breast, broccoli, and tomatoes over rice, and that's a meal. Shrimp, like shrimp cooks up in five minutes. When I'm, when I'm um, really rushed, like shrimp is my go-to. 
shrimp and I just throw a bag of fresh spinach on top and just let it uh, wilt a little bit and call it dinner over rice. Mexican seasoned chicken, bag of frozen Mexican vegetables over Mexican rice. Vegetables assorted and topped with cheese or olives can go, beans can go over pasta. So for these meals that are pasta or rice based, like how do I make them quick? Because I think I don't have time to make rice or pasta. So now I'm gonna go to the next slide. And why I'm, I'm showcasing pasta or rice is because I see them as kind of the blank canvas. Like you can create any flavor you want when you have a pasta or rice as a base and then just add in a boatload of vegetables and your protein. So this is a slide of just some ideas for quick um, meals. So we have a quinoa cup, it's already cooked. Mm -hmm. So if I'm making a dish, I want quinoa as my grain, I can put my meat, my vegetable in my skillet and then just as it's done, just to heat up a little bit, I'll throw the quinoa in there, mix it up for a minute or two and that's a complete meal. The next picture, we sell pasta in a bag. So it's probably double the price of pasta that you cook yourself, but it only takes 60 seconds and there is no pot. So you take the bag of pasta and you crunch it a little bit because they're all stuck together usually because they pack them flat so they stick just to loosen them. Then you rip open the top and with the top open, put it in a microwave for 60 seconds and you have pasta. I love that and I add it to whatever I'm doing on a skillet. I do that hot that way, or I even cook it in the microwave for the 60 seconds because that just separates it nicer, even though it is already fully cooked. You don't need to actually cook it, that just heats it. But when it's heated, it absorbs flavors better. So I'll sometimes use that to make a cold pasta. I will cook it, put it in a bowl, put in my um, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, little bit of lemon, cilantro, then just all my vegetables, my cut up cucumber and tomato, and maybe some sliced green beans, carrot shreds, whatever I have, and whatever the protein would be, um, whether it's cold shrimp or cut up cold chicken, I do that to use leftovers, throw it in there, and that helps make a cold salad as well. Or we have the rice, so you could even use a flavored rice, and this one's 90 seconds, so a minute and a half, add that to a skillet dinner or on the side of a skillet dinner, or even just the minute little ready to serve cup. So maybe not everybody wants rice. Maybe I'll just make one rice cup because um, somebody else is on a low carb diet. Like this is nice to have single portions that you don't have to add to the whole thing. So just some ideas to help you create a meal and get something on the table quick. Same thing goes for the skillet that you can do in, on a sheet pan that you put in the oven. Um, I'll call this a roasted meal. So a sheet pan meal, just because it's one pan, to me is quick and easy. So when it's roasted, it's coated in oil, and then whatever your seasoning is, you spread them out separately on the sheet pan. It's cooked at high temperature. I usually do either 425 or 450 for like 15 to 25 minutes and then dinner's done. So you can put right on the sheet pan, you know, your chicken breast, your fish filet, whatever it is. It just makes for easy cleanup because it's all in one pan. Some ideas could be chicken, potato, and vegetable and kind of like the center picture. That's how I tend to do it. I keep them separate. I don't know why. There's no reason for that. <laughs> Um, but I usually do just like that picture of like my sweet potato, my Brussels sprouts or broccoli, and my chicken or fish. And then I season each a little bit differently the way I like it or my family likes it. Pop it in the oven. But you can do like the left hand picture all mixed up in one. So you can get a boatload of different vegetables in there. You know, you could even have different meats in there if you wanted. Just everything can hop in um, one. And then the picture on the right with the eggs, I put that in there just because that is my absolute favorite day after Thanksgiving um, meal. I usually have people stay over my house and if there's anything left over from Thanksgiving meal, it goes in the breakfast. So I do potatoes or stuffing, one or the other, whatever one happens to be more of leftover. I'll throw in the cranberry sauce, I'll throw in all of the turkey that's left over. I put, chop it up, put it in the sheet pan, 
cook it and then pull it out, make little wells just like that, then crack an egg in each and put it back in for 10 more minutes. And then everybody raves about it and loves it. The cranberry sauce, turkey and egg combination is just delicious, but it's quick. I mean, that would be great for something like that for a dinner too. So it could be anything you like, just roast it on a sheet pan. And to me, people that don't like vegetables or don't eat a lot of vegetables because the odor or the squishiness of them, when you roast them, it's a whole different ball game. It makes them so much more enjoyable because they get, uh, my husband calls them burnt. They are not burnt, but they get browned and crispy and that makes them just delightful, not burnt. <laughs> So slow cooker, slow cooker is another idea and it's not quick, it's, it's slow like it says, but why I like it is because you throw everything in and you just forget about it till dinner and it's still kind of that one pot, so easy cleanup. And to me, slow cooker is great if you're making stews or soup and as you know, summer's still here and it's incredibly hot, but I know sometime soon that's going to leave us and I'll be ready for soup weather again. And I'm, I'm one, I love making soups and throwing all the ingredients just in one pot and letting it cook all day while I'm at work. Um, pulled pork or pulled chicken is another great slow cooker idea. So I'll just put, throw in chicken breasts or pork loin or whatever I have, some barbecue sauce and then just let it cook all day long. And then at the end, you know, shred it, either two forks kind of shred, or sometimes I just throw it in the blender and let the blender do its thing to make my pulled pork or pulled chicken. And I like it over potato, that's kind of how I do it, but you could put it over pasta in a sandwich, whatever you want. And I just wanted to show there are other things you could do um, that may not be as liquidy as as people tend to think as slow cookers, like stuffed peppers, or I've seen people throw a whole chicken in there and you know cook the whole chicken all day. It doesn't have to be that liquidy thing that most people think. So just, I wanna say this month, maybe even mid-month, um, we launched a new line of heat and eat meats, as I'll call them, or cook in a bag meats. They are available in chicken, beef, pork, and seafood, and they're, they're brand new. They're less than a month in the stores. And everyone cooks in 30 minutes. We have a large variety of flavors. They're found in the fresh department, so the meat department or the seafood department. And what you do is you t it's, it's in a plastic bag. You take the label off, and then you cook it in the bag if you choose to, but you can. So you just throw the bag on a sheet pan, pop it in the oven, cooks in the bag, you cut the bag open and, you know, throw it on your plate and slice it. You have um, a meal for everybody. So that's an idea too, that trying to help people um, have quick, easy meals. Cause you know, it, when you eat together, you tend to be a happier family. Like that's what they say in research. So trying to get people to eat more meals together too, in a way that we can handle it today. Cause everybody, I think it's gonna be hard when school starts and we're all a little bit rushed for time. So fruit, what's a way to include fruit? Make fruit your dessert. So that's just another food group there to get more of some delicious fun ideas. So save that sugary sweet for a rare treat or a special occasion. Like I always have cake on birthdays or celebrating something, but try not to do that on a regular basis. Fruit is my go-to sweet. And you can make it fancy if you wanted to, you don't have to, but you could put it in a kebab or in a salad or freeze fruit into a little pop. Um, popsicles, what I mean, pop. Fresh, canned, frozen, any variety. The picture up there on the left is a watermelon pizza, which I love. I take, I slice my pizza just like that in rounds and then in quarters. I put a little blob of Greek yogurt and then put some blueberries and strawberries or a chunk of mango on it. You could top it with mint or basil leaf if you wanted. And it just, people are always so shocked of, oh my God, that's so beautiful. I love this idea. Like it really is a big hit anywhere I've taken it and all the kids love it. It's watermelon. How do you not love watermelon, right? So just different ideas, get sweetness. You can fancy it up and it makes it um, accessible and delightful. 
And this is just my picture of a family enjoying a meal together because the whole purpose of what we're trying to do is encourage you to spend more time with family and enjoy your family meals. And like it, it helps your well-being overall. <laughs>